Salutations and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Athanasian Creed, and I believe this is going to be verses 31 through 33. But first, last time on the Athanasian Creed, with a computer doing something in the background. And there we have it. Here's a rubric, everything that we're looking for as we go through the text. We'll go ahead and get started. Aequalis patri secundum divinitatem, minor patre secundum humanitatem, qui licet Deus sit et homo, non duo tamen, sed unus est Christus. Unus autum non conversione divinitatis in carnem, sed assumptione humanitatis in Deo. There we have it. Continuing on from what was said in verse 30, here we have iqualis, which has the I-S ending there from the third declension adjective. And we see no verb, so that means that we're going to have to assume a verb. And est is the most likely one. Take a look at the next clause, minor patrum secundum humanitatum. There's also no verb, so I'm inserting an est probably right here. Oops, that's Greek. Makes the most sense. That way we have some sense to this. Iqualis is either the nominative singular or the genitive singular form. We have no other good option here for a subject, so that makes the most sense. Singular masculine. Still speaking, of course, about Jesus. Equal and Iqualis takes the dative in its case, which we see here with this I, patri, dative, singular, and masculine. And then secundum. Normally, we would look at this and we'd say, ah, an adjective must be modifying duinitatem. But then you need to remember that duinitatem is one of the TAS, third declension feminine nouns. So secundum is the wrong case. And well, it's the right case, but it's the wrong gender for that. And then patri, and secundum is definitely the wrong case for both patri and aequa. So something else must be going on. And what we have is secundum is uh, actually a preposition in this case it is, is frequent so prepositional phrase starting here plus the accusative ending right there divinitatem with the em there is of course accusative singular and feminine as was said so then our whole sentence is he is understood equal to the father According to divinity, and we could understand a possessive pronoun in there if we wanted to. Next, minor. Minor here is, of course, another nominative singular masculine. And then patre, as you can see from the E, is the ablative singular and also mas masculine. So minor is being used as a compare. Oh, gosh. Yes, of course, it's comparative. Nominative, singular, masculine, comparative. That's common. Comparative. There we go. That's, we don't run into enough of those. So comparatives, of course, take the ablative for the ablative of comparison. Secundum, same form as that one. Humanitatem, we've got another TAS feminine. So accusative, singular, feminine. Less... Let me insert the word than because of the function, the father, and so that's verse 31 finished. We move on to verse 32, and we start off immediately with a relative pronoun, which is going to be either nominative singular or nominative plural because of that I. We know Jesus is still singular here, so 
nominative singular masculine who and then we get to this subordinate clause uh, liket is a bit of a trouble word for us here normally we would look at that and go oh this is the verb and it means it is permitted or it is allowed and then we have deos sit et homo wait sit we got another verb in there that doesn't make any sense so either et's in the wrong place or liket is not a verb and it turns out that it is permitted it is allowed doesn't even make any sense in here. It is, God is permitted, he is and human? No, 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 that doesn't make any sense. So lick it actually is a conjunction. Which is weird, but hey. And it means granted, that, or although. So we need to figure out which one of those makes sense after we parse the rest of this. Nominative, singular, masculine. Sit, this is of course from est, and it is the third person singular present active and subjunctive which makes a lot of sense since liket in the clauses that it sets up always wants a subjunctive all right well, as a conjunction as a, I should have made that very clear as it's a conjunction it wants a subjunctive when it is the verb then it actually wants a dative or an infinitive Okay, et homo. Homo is, of course, nominative, singular, masculine as well. Then we've got who, granted he is God and man, or who, that he is God and man, or who, although he is God and man. So all three of those, eh, not really the one in the middle, but they, they make some sense. We need the rest of the context finishing off the sentence to understand which one makes the most sense. So non, we've got a negative there. Duo, of course, that's going to be nominative plural, and then no gender in the, in the nominative form because it only differentiates in the dative and ablative. Is that right? Yes. Yes, it is right. Tommen, this one we have normally translated when we've got our John translation, meaning but or now. In this case, I think, however, makes the most sense, which would then mean we are treating this liket as the adversative translation. So we would have who, although he is God and man, insert another form of est, is, however, is not to. And then we have something that makes sense. Granted also works. Granted. So I'm going to write down both of those, but that, nah, that doesn't work. Who... Okay, and then this one's pretty easy, but unus, nominative, singular, masculine, don't need to parse that, and definitely don't need to parse that, those are pretty clear. But is one Christ. Alternatively, we could move Christ to the beginning as, for whatever reason, Latin likes to put its subjects at the end with est, so it would be, but Christ is one. So I'll write that as the second option. And that ends verse 32. Moving on to verse 33, which according to the editors is a single contained thought. And that seems, yeah, sure. So unus autum, autum again could be however, it could be yet, it could be now, it could be but. So we need a little bit more context, no parsing there, negative. Conversione, we've got an E there for a ablative. And it is singular. And this is an unusual one because you, from what I remember, third declension O nouns are neuter. But this one is actually feminine. Conversion, conversio, conversiones. Yeah, it's weird. And divinitatis, here we have another tas, tatis. IS there is going to be the genitive, singular, and feminine. So divinity is owning either conversion or it is owning in carnem, prepositional phrase there with the em, we know that this takes the accusative, and it is singular, and this is neuter, I want to say. Okay, so then our options are, but one not ablative conversion of divinity into flesh, 
however, one not, now, one not. I think either the, uh, oh gosh, brain, 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 failure. The disjunctive, but, or however, are the two best options for translating out him, and however would be in keeping, oops. I said a bunch of stupid stuff about Tam Tommen. I don't know what was going on with my brain. There will be a note. You'll have seen that. Just moving on. One. However. Not. Conversione. This is going to be a ablative of means. It won't, wouldn't be a manner. That, that one doesn't make any sense. So ablative of means. by conversion and then a genitive of oh, like, oh gosh what is that it's like a genitive it's not a genitive of a description but it's something along the same lines there but substance maybe genitive of substance conversion of the and then into flesh said but assumptione so this is going to be the same function as conversione and assumption i think is also feminine so at least there's some consistency between the two of them and then humanitatis we got the is again same form as divinity and then in deum is the same use as in carnum by Assumption by the taking up of and There we go Apart from the confusion with Tommen, sorry about that again. We are done with this. So let's take a look at what it says He is understood equal to the father according to divinity less than the father according to humanity and in both cases we can understand a possessive pronoun who although he is god and human or granted he is god and man is not two however but christ is one one however not by conversion of the divinity into flesh we should do into the flesh uh, nah but by assumption of the humanity into god all right, so yeah, it makes sense, linguistically. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope taking a look at this has been helpful for you, and sorry for the continually shaking camera, unfortunately, for this setup. I don't think there's anything I can do about that, except not bump the table. I hope you have a very good day. Farewell.